Welcome to What to Look for in Wine. To say I've enjoyed my share of wine would be a gross understatement. In fact, there was a time when wine was just about my number one passion. My obsession with food and curiosity for wine began when I was very young. I always ate well, and even as a child, I enjoyed cooking. For me, it was more than just helping mom in the kitchen. It was my entertainment, and it became an avenue to entertain others. Our family reunions brought together relatives from both New York and California. There were serious wine collectors from both coasts. Without fail, the discussions would begin on the merits and comparison of which is better, and it eventually escalated to a civilized war. Beginning at about age seven, I wondered how people could get so excited over a bottle of wine. I had to know. So, I listened. And at about age 12, and I can still remember smelling and tasting my Uncle Ron's 1964 Magnum of Louis Martini Pinot Noir, and then he let me compare it to a 59 Mercury from Avery's. And from then on, I knew I was going to enjoy wine when I was old enough. <laughs> Not one to wait. By 21, I had been exposed to many of the finest wines the world had to offer. When it came time to pursue a career, my goal of becoming a chef easily won. I began as a broiler cook, but soon learned of an unusual restaurant called The Hobbit in Orange. They served food in a manner that I enjoyed dining. Only about 40 people were served nine courses, slowly, meticulously, over a period of about four hours. The menu changed every week, and you began dinner in the wine cellar that contained over 600 wines. I worked there as a sous chef and trained as a sommelier, or wine steward, for four years. <laughs> Believe me, it was the time of my life. I married my wife, Diana, in 1979, and in 1982, we left The Hobbit to travel Europe to further our culinary techniques. And to see what were considered the finest vineyards of the world firsthand. We spent six months on bicycles, touring 11 countries, studying the foods, the vineyards, and the wines. And what an experience that was. Upon my return, I was recommended for a position as sommelier at the Weston South Coast Plaza at Alfredo's restaurant. It was at the hotel where I developed a training program for professional people to handle and sell wine. In 1985, our first training manual was completed and copyrighted and then off to Europe for more study. We opened a wine school and had classes for both professionals and the general public, with as many as six classes being offered each week. What to Look For in Wine allows us to bring our experiences into your own home. We hope you enjoy it. Wine is a liquid that has no equal. It is more complex than any other food or beverage. It is alive. When Jesus of Nazareth set up communion to remember him by, I think perhaps he had a specific reason for using actual living wine and not just grape juice. When put in perspective, wine is a complex matter, a living material mixed with water and sunshine, and the end product is guided by the efforts of man. I believe this is one of the greatest gifts God gave man the ability to manage and work with a living substance. To truly know wine, it is a great advantage to be schooled in the laws of chemistry and physics. Better yet, to know and understand the forces of nature, the farming of the land, the cultures and customs of many peoples, to know the world history all the way back to the dawn of time, and to have an acute appreciation of fine art. All these will enhance your enjoyment of wine tenfold. And there's more. Sound complicated? <laughs> it is, but the beauty is, to truly enjoy wine, all you have to do is take the time to notice it. In What to Look for in Wine, we will show you step-by-step, -step, simple pictures and graphs, how we learn to notice wine. You will learn exactly what the wine's appearance can show you, what the nose can tell you, and how to taste it. So, going to put a little in our mouth. When following these exercises, try to be consistent by having a glass of wine handy each time you read through the material. And no, you don't always have to drink it. Many times we'll spit. When tasting, try to use the same basic shape 
of glass for both white and red wines. This puts all wines on the same level. Also, fill the glass to the same level each time. Many times I'll use a measuring cup. Taste all wines at room temperature, even the white ones. And be sure to hold the glass by the stem so not to smudge the bowl of the glass. Most of all, don't be in a hurry. Take your time and get comfortable with the idea that it takes years to really understand what wine is all about. This is a field where the more you know, the more you'll find out how much there is to know. But like a foreign language, the more you practice, the more proficient and confident you will become. The way a wine shows involves a whole host of considerations. The true quality of a wine comes from the wine's real concentration of flavors, which comes from many complex esters, mm, interesting. which the wine gets from all the aspects of the winemaking process. From the soil of the vineyard, to the types of grapes themselves, the amount of sun, fermentation style, wood, no wood, how young or old it is, how it was stored, and it goes on and on. Great wine, with all its complexity, is made to search out and enjoy. And Jesus made it clear that when heaven and earth are one again, there is wine there. I look forward to that.